Good afternoon and welcome to another InReach Field Experience webinar. Today we're going to be talking about winter safety and your InReach. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Chip Noble. I'm a product manager here at Garmin. And as you can see from this slightly frosty picture from a winter hike here in Maine, I am also a winter sports enthusiast and an InReach user. Today, during our webinar, we're going to be talking about how to prepare for your next winter adventure. And we're going to be talking about uh, inReach technology. Certainly, we're going to recap a lot of the features that we've talked about in our webinars. We're also going to talk about our top 10 tips for using your inReach device when it's cold. Winter activities certainly require some special preparation. Uh, there's, there's a little more involved than your average summer uh, trail hike. So we wanted to give you some of our tips. A lot of uh, our associates, particularly living here in Maine, um, uh, take part in, in some fun outdoor activities we wanted to share with you. We also wanted to talk about some general winter activity safety tips, not specifically tied to inReach or technology, but things that we would like to pass along uh, for those interested in outdoor adventures. So covered the agenda, let's let's uh, jump right in and we'll talk about um, InReach technology, a little recap of things we've covered in past webinars. We know that the InReach device, uh, the InReach technology is important because it allows you to send and receive a message using the Iridium satellite network, which has 100% global coverage. And that's very exciting because it's a very powerful satellite network and uh, it also allows you to track your location. So you can start tracking with your inReach device. You can share that track with your friends and family who are following along on your MapShare page. Hopefully all of you have taken advantage of that MapShare page, sent it out to people who are interested in, in watching your adventures. It's where they can see your breadcrumb trail. It's also where they can go to send you a message. So they can tap on your user and type a message, send it to you, and when you receive it, you can reply to their uh, to their email or their cell phone uh, number. The InReach system also allows you to trigger an SOS. That's very important because uh, we, we have our, uh, the Garmin IERCC, which is our 24 seven global monitoring center. And that, um, that, that resource is there. If you have an emergency, you declare your SOS and then you can use that two-way messaging capability to communicate details about what you're experiencing. They can let you know when help will arrive and, uh, and coordinate between the search and rescue team and uh, between yourself as the, the user of the device. InReach allows you to request a weather forecast. We're gonna talk about that quite a bit today. A real important part of uh, winter travel is being aware of weather forecasts and particularly changing weather forecasts. So we'll look at that. Navigating the the inReach device and the different devices from Garmin that have inReach technology built into them are powerful handheld GPS devices with, with great navigation tools, um, adventure tools with waypoints and, and routes and tracks and the like. We'll look at that. You can also take your inReach device and pair it with a companion app that is loaded on your smartphone. And that's very handy because you could clip your inReach device to your backpack and then use your phone as the, um, as the companion that allows you to see detailed maps or other um, information about your trip, send it, uh, sending and receiving messages, that sort of thing. And then the last bullet here is about using the Garmin Explore website. We're gonna look at that. It lets you review past activities. You can see your breadcrumb trail. It lets you plan for future adventures with waypoints and tracks and routes. And it's the tool that you'll use to organize, uh, or sorry, to maintain your details for inReach, things like your emergency contacts or any special safety instructions that you'd like uh, communicated in case of an emergency. So a lot uh, that we can do with our inReach technology. An important note there at the bottom, definitely in order to use these services, it does require an active Iridium satellite subscription. 
that enables the tracking, the messaging, and the SOS capabilities. We're going to talk about the importance of uh, checking your gear before you go to make sure that your subscription is active. And we also want to make sure that you think about where you're planning to go. There are some parts of the world, some countries in the world that have restrictions or they actually prohibit the use of satellite communication. That is the responsibility of all of us as inReach users to make sure we're aware of where we're going and, and keep an eye on that. Um, so, we're, so we're following all of the regulations. So some notes there, but just a general high level discussion of inReach technologies. The first tip that we'd like to talk about for being prepared for our cold weather winter activity is to make sure that you select and bring the proper gear with you. The picture we have here is from a past webinar where Dana, who helps who helps uh, coordinate all of our webinars, uh, she put a winter training, mountaineering, ice climbing training session together for a bunch of us here in the office. And this is a picture of her backpack. And, and her husband's backpack with some in-reach devices. So why is it important to select and bring the proper gear? Well, it's important because we want to make sure that we're comfortable and we're able to enjoy our adventure. So certainly that, that covers everything from uh, the clothing that we're bringing, the food that we're carrying, the, the tools that we have with us to make sure that we have a pleasant experience. The other real important piece of this is that an equipment failure or a minor injury when it's cold out can have some pretty serious consequences. You could imagine that um, in the summertime, if you have an injury or, or an equipment failure and you're in the woods longer or possibly even have to overnight, not so big a deal because the temperatures are mild, but in the winter you have that added cold weather and things can escalate quickly. And so we wanna make sure we have the right gear all the way down to making sure that we are carrying our in-reach device with us. And so this is an in-reach tip that we're gonna look at around each of these categories. Always pack your in-reach. Even more important in the winter time, when you wanna be able to communicate that something has happened. I've had an equipment failure. I've had a medical emergency. I need someone to come and help me through this situation. Remember that you can utilize your in-reach device for two-way messaging, for requesting a weather forecast for navigation, uh, and that last that last bullet is the most important one. If you find that uh, the situation has reached a point where you're not sure what the outcome is going to be, or or you recognize I need assistance here, you can use your inReach device to declare an SOS. The the Garmin IERCC, the the International Emergency Response Coordination Center, will reach out to you and and ask for details and help you through the situation. So always pack your in-reach device. Some additional tips uh, brought to us by Daisy. This is uh, Brian's dog. He's one of our engineers on the web team. Um, Daisy would, wants to make sure we remember to make sure that we have the right gear for our location, the activity and conditions. And so, um, you know, you see a list here, snowshoes, ski, traction, that's Daisy has these very fashionable uh, dog, doggy booties on, make sure you have comfortable footwear. Trekking poles, the, the list we had a Garmin outing club adventure with some ice fishing this past weekend. And uh, it was a bright sunny day. And, and one of the gentlemen on the trip noted that uh, he had a little sunburn. And so remembering to have sunscreen, even in the winter, it's cold, but there's still a lot of bright sun and reflection. Um, and one of the things that we find very helpful is to just have a packing list so that you can check it ahead of time. And the key really is to make sure that you don't leave any gear behind. You don't want to leave anything important at home. The next tip that we'd like to talk about is managing your temperature, really controlling your layers and regulating your body temperature. And this is a nice picture here from Lucy Bernard. She had a, a photo in one of our blog posts, and this is all the gear she was taking on her adventure. So you wanna regulate your body temperature, most especially in the winter, because if you allow yourself to overheat, then now you're, you've created some perspiration, some sweat in your, in your layers, in your base layers. And when you stop moving and you're not generating that body heat anymore or as much, you can become cold and chilled and that can be dangerous in the winter when there's the risk of, of hypothermia. Um, 
We would also point out with this being a, a talk about inReach that electronics are particularly impacted by cold temperatures. And so we have to be mindful of that and think about where we position them, how we carry them, and uh, how we preserve that battery life to the best of our ability. And so our inReach tip is to keep your, your device warm and you do that by keeping it inside of your jacket. Perhaps you have a, uh, a pocket on the sleeve of your jacket. A lot of people with the, the ski jackets have the pockets on the side for their lift tickets, that sort of thing. I'll put my inReach device inside the jacket there or maybe in the pouch, the, the, the breast pocket of my jacket, I'll put the device there. But the key is that your body heat keeps the battery warm and that extends the battery life, pre prevents that cold weather impact. So carry it close to your body, upper pocket. This picture shows you that we will, we will display a warning if the device approaches a minimum operating temperature. That's to remind you to, to keep it warm and uh, just lets you know about uh, those, those temperature ranges for the device. So manage your inReach by keeping it warm. And some additional tips for, um, for, for general activity, dress in layers. We, we talk uh, about having layers that you can easily put on and take off to control your temperature. Make sure that your outer layers, your shell is water and windproof and your inner layers are, are uh, down or, or uh, fleece and are able to be insulating and retain that warm air near your body. Remove layers as you get warm. I actually start most of my trips um, cold. I will deliberately not put on a lot of layers because I know that as I start hiking, I'm going to generate body heat. And inevitably, if I layer up in the beginning, 10 minutes down the trail, I'm stopping and taking off my pack and pulling layers off. So I'll start cold at the car and, and hike into being a comfortable temperature. Um, you see some notes about material, wool and synthetics, uh, cotton kills is the is the thing you'll hear from, from folks in the backcountry. You don't want something that's going to get wet and not dry out. And um, make sure you pack the right accessories. Certainly bring multiples. I will hike in, in thin gloves while I'm moving, but I also carry a, a mitten shell that keeps my fingers together and warm and dry. And don't forget about your feet. Uh, certainly, if you if you have a liner and a sock and you feel things start to bunch, you have to address that. If you feel that your socks are getting sweaty and, um, and, and wet, they can get cold. I don't hesitate to stop even in the winter on the side of the trail and, and uh, change from a, a wet sock into a dry sock to keep my feet from getting cold. So think about layer management. Think about, um, you know, when you stop, if, you've, if you're in a, a limited number of layers, when you stop, put on some extra layers to warm up and just and manage them that way. The next tip that we wanna talk about is letting others know your plan. And the reason for this, why is it important? Well, particularly in the winter when it's cold, as we mentioned in the previous slide, things can, can escalate quickly. And so you want to make sure people know what your plan is. If anything happens, it's good if emergency uh, coordinators need to try and get extra information. One of the things they're going to do is reach out to your emergency contacts to ask for details. And if you have shared your plan, then they're able to to communicate that information. If if I'm going to climb in the White Mountains and someone contacts my wife for details and she's able to say, well, he I know he was going to park at the visitor center and he was going to take the Lion's Head Trail up to uh, the the Mount Washington observatory, then they can communicate that and they know my path. So that's an important thing to share with uh, friends and family. So the inReach tip, this is uh, an important piece here, keeping in touch with your friends using the uh, MapShare page and using tracking. And you can see this blue line shows someone who did actually park at the visitor center. I believe this is Dana's track line and hiked up to Tuckerman's Ravine popular destination in the winter for skiers and people looking to watch skiers. Um, but it lets family and friends follow along and they can send you a message or locate you or even send you a waypoint if they wanna meet you at a particular spot. You go into the Explore website, you go to social, you turn on MapShare, pretty straightforward. We've covered this in other webinars. You can send a link from the Explore website with your MapShare to friends so that they can keep that in there. 
uh, email list and if they want to find you they just reference that link or you can send it when you start tracking this is this is a really nice feature because not only does it send the link but it kind of lets people know hey you're starting a trip it might be fun to go see what you're up to when they go to the map share they could see the route if you planned it ahead of time waypoints that kind of thing so you're able to send your map share link even if you forgot to do it ahead of time you can do it from the uh, from the trailhead also important to message friends and family while you're out let them know if you're running behind and there's going to be a delay this is important in the winter i am i've been doing this for a long time but i still always seem to underestimate how long it's going to take me to snowshoe to a destination and back so it's convenient to send a message to people and say or, or it's polite to send a message and say don't worry i know i, I thought i was going to be out by a particular time in my plan i'm running a little bit behind you can do that in a couple of ways. Uh, everyone's familiar with a custom message. This allows you to type the details of what's happening. You can also use a preset and a quick text message, and we're gonna talk about that a little later because presets are really convenient. They allow you to um, send a message with just one or two button presses, and that's really useful. And a quick text is kind of the best, uh, it's in between a preset and a, and a custom message. You can reply to someone with a quick text, and that's a phrase that you wrote ahead of time. My, the one I use a lot is, I can't reply now, but I'll write later. They get to know that everything's okay, that you got their message, and you'll respond to them when you are settled and, and you're in a warm place where you can type or that sort of thing. Important note there at the end that all sent and received messages do count towards your message total. So looking at our uh, activity, Tips here in general, not just an in-reach specific thing, but plan the hike, hike the plan is a phrase you hear a lot in the in the hiking space and it applies, you know, same for biking or skiing or snowmobiling. You wanna make sure that someone else knows what your plan is. And once you've made that plan, it's important to try and stick to that plan. While the in-reach does allow you to message that there's been a change, in general, if you plan to go on a particular uh, trail to get to the summit, that's the one you should use because that's probably what's going to be communicated to people if they look to your emergency contacts. Um, so uh, other tips here, try to avoid adventuring alone. I do enjoy a solo hike every now and then, but the key is to remember in the winter, the consequences of something happening with you will impact anyone that has to come and help you. So think about the exposure that you'll be creating for them. Think about your own exposure and make sure that you're just planning well ahead of time. If you're going to travel with a group, same idea. Remember, everyone has different sets of, uh, of experiences and, and capabilities. Try and plan around your the person in your group who you think might be have the, 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 the lowest skill set so that they can have a good time and still experience it. You may even find that you have to uh, split your groups up and do your your extreme adventures uh, on a particular weekend and a, and a more casual trip that's uh, more inclusive. So a lot of a lot of good uh, important tips there around letting people know. Uh, the next tip that we wanted to share is uh, making sure that you know and you're, you're prepared for the conditions. This winter in particular has been has been challenging. I know out west and even here in New England. There's been a lot of snowfall, a lot of um, a lot of dangerous conditions in the backcountry around avalanches, and particularly important for all of us to be aware of the winter conditions and careful in our planning, making sure that we're reading avalanche forecasts and and uh, doing the right thing to keep ourselves safe and anyone that might have to come into the backcountry to offer assistance. Winter conditions are certainly harder to prepare for and more dangerous than summer conditions. They can also change quickly, as you see here, and definitely higher elevations bring in those extreme weather uh, situations and you know, more, more slope in the mountain means more chance for snow to slide and uh, things that you have to be aware of. The extreme cold of the winter also makes things more difficult. We're gonna look at the challenges of sending messages when your hands are cold and, uh, and making sure that you're prepared. So our inReach tip in this in this area, you see here a picture of, of John. He's one of our engineers on the firmware side of things. He's using an inReach Explorer Plus 
interface with his uh, with his gloves on. Buttoned interface makes that really easy. I highly recommend the devices that have a button interface for people who are going out in the cold conditions. The buttons make it easier for you to enter your messages. The larger devices make the battery life last longer. There's a lot of benefits to that device. And the reason is because, as you see here, it only takes a few seconds for your fingers to get cold. And when your fingers are cold, that dexterity starts to drop off and you want to you want to keep your hands warm. You want to keep the gloves on. And so if you can still type your message using the buttons, that's great. For those of you that are using uh, a cell phone with your device, or perhaps you're using the Montana device, the Montana does have a, a glove friendly touchscreen. But for cell phone users, we recommend that you carry, um, I've carried a small touchscreen stylus. You've seen them. They look like the little pens with a rubbery tip on them. And uh, you can hang one around your neck on a lanyard and take your phone out. And it will allow you to interact with your phone without taking your glove off, which is a, a pretty important, important thing. Going along with knowing and preparing for the conditions, um, you know, in general, you definitely want to make sure that you're looking ahead of time. You're researching the weather. You're researching uh, the conditions you're going to face. What are the road conditions? Are there any facility closures you have to be aware of? We have a nice ice fishing photo from our from our last outing. How thick is the ice? The snow depth, avalanche danger. All of these things become more important in the winter um, because the consequences, as we said, are are more severe. Also want to make sure you're looking at uh, the the daylight. When is sunset? And then plan around that. The temperatures are going to drop when the when the sun goes down. Uh, the amount of daylight for seeing and navigating is going to be reduced in the winter. So important to keep track of that. Want to keep moving and staying warm. This is another tip. Why is that important? Well, when you stop moving, you can become chilled. So you want to stay warm. And when you stop moving, that that um, your body can cool off obviously and your muscles will it'll be harder to start up again if you cool down so there's some things that you can do to to um, make sure that you stay moving and stay warm and keep your body ready for your for your outdoor activity looking at in reach that's around using presets and quick text they're just faster to send a preset message can be sent in just a couple of button presses the um, Quick texts are a fast way to respond to people. They can be sent from the device. They can be sent from the app as well. You can have up to three preset messages. These screens are showing how to send a preset from an Explorer Plus, a Mini, or a GPS Map 66i. Definitely worth noting that you can also send them from a Montana um, or an Alpha 200i. Uh, just screens, they're, they're similar to 66i. You can also have up to 20 quick text messages. And again, those are just things you typed ahead of time, but you can send them in response to anybody. So can't reply now, I'll write later is one I use a lot. The uh, a bonus tip here, uh, this is something that hopefully people have seen. If you're writing a custom message, you can take advantage of keyboard shortcuts. We'll suggest words based on what you're typing. You can select them to not have to key in all of the text. I find this particularly useful if for some reason I'm sending a custom message from the InReach Mini. You can see there, press and hold to select the suggested word when you're entering on the Mini. Um, but definitely use those keyboard shortcuts. Some additional activity tips. Again, here's Katie. I think this is in the White Mountains. She's a, a quite, a, quite a trail runner and she has her uh, Instinct Watch, I believe it is, paired with her uh, InReach Mini here. Uh, in this picture, but some other tips, make sure you bring snacks and drinks that are easy to consume. I carry bars in my front pocket, that sort of thing. Um, be prepared with extra layers. Definitely want to stay warm. Uh, if you come to a stop, get those extra layers out, put them on so that you don't get a chill and be prepared to, to pack them again before you get started. Uh, we mentioned the sun. In the winter, you're the sun is a powerful tool to warm yourself up, but it also sets earlier, so you have less uh, less sun exposure during the during the day. And, and then the note about pairing your your watch to your InReach device. That's really convenient because you can use the InReach remote widget, which we've talked about in some of our webinars, to do things like start and stop tracking, 
read an incoming message, reply with a quick text, or even start, uh, you know, declare an SOS right from your wrist while your in-reach device is clipped to your backpack. Next tip we want to talk about is watching the weather. Why is this important? Well, you can see here, this is Jules, uh, Dana's husband on Mount Washington, and it was a bluebird sky day, and I believe it was like 15 minutes later, the, the clouds rolled in and he was in a near whiteout condition. And so that's important to keep an eye on the weather. The temperature can drop quickly, snowstorms can come in, that sort of thing, natural consequences around uh, being in the mountains in the wintertime when snow is common. So with the inReach, we wanna encourage people to use the weather forecast feature. You can see in these screenshots how to request a weather forecast on the Explorer Plus, the Mini, the 66i. It's also available on the Montana, the Alpha, that sort of thing. It lets you monitor activities. There's a basic forecast and a marine forecast for land and sea, and then there's a premium forecast, which increases the number of um, uh, the, the interval for the hours in between the forecast. So you get more detail from a premium forecast. And you see here on the Montana, this is what a weather forecast looks like. And some general tips, uh, make sure that you do monitor the weather before you go out on the trip and uh, keep tabs on the weather while you're out. And, and the last one, this is important, don't be afraid to turn around if you find the weather has become so extreme. We all have the gear that we believe will help us be prepared for rain and snow and wind and everything in between. But at some point, the weather may um, hit a level that it's outside of your your comfort zone or your or your skill set. And I certainly have had situations, they're disappointing, but I've turned around uh, approaching the summit because the visibility just wasn't there or the wind became too uh, severe, that sort of thing. That's an important part of, of adventuring is knowing when it's when it's time to turn around. Knowing how to navigate is a cold weather tip that we would like to share. Why is it important? Well, this picture is pretty interesting. If you look, this is Dana uh, hiking in the White Mountains and the white arrow is pointing at a trailblaze, which in the summertime would be about eye level. That's how much snow can, can be on these trails. And so she, so it's around her, her boots there. Um, so you want to keep an eye out uh, for navigating and know that your your visual cues for how to get in and out of the woods might be obstructed, might be covered with snow. Cairn certainly can be buried, that sort of thing. Um, another important thing to keep in mind is that when snow starts up, you'll lose the um, your ability to see any kind of distance. And the last one is important that when it does snow, there's a good chance that the trail that was very clear to you on your way in may be completely obstructed or buried on your way out. So you wanna keep an eye on the weather, keep an eye on your uh, uh, visual cues for how you get in and out, keep your device with you. And so we look at our inReach tip, use the inReach navigation feature to help you find your way. You can plan ahead of time with waypoints at your car location and routes to help you find your way to the summit. Um, you can do that planning ahead of time. You can mark your waypoint at the vehicle during your trip. Here's some screens that show you how to mark a waypoint on each of these devices. The, the traditional handheld devices have a mark button. You just press it and it captures your location. You can use the menus even on the mini to create your location. The trackback feature is an important feature. Um, I, I'm not sure, I believe most of our customers have, are aware of this, but the trackback is something that's pretty pretty nice. You start tracking when you go into the woods. And if you get turned around or for some reason you just wanna find your way back to the vehicle, you can go to the activity recording page and go to your current activity. And from the map, you can see that track back option and you choose it and it turns your track into a route and guides you back to the beginning. It's very handy to use. Recommend using track back. Next tip here is knowing how to navigate, uh, sorry, activity tips here. Um, and this is really just in addition to what we talked about with our in-reach capabilities. It's always good to have a redundant system, particularly in the winter. And that would be a paper map and a compass that's in your pack. Maybe you don't have to pull it out, but if something happens to your electronics, then you have 
a reliable compass and a map to fall back on. We, we, I do not recommend relying on your phone. It's a very powerful tool for placing calls and taking pictures and doing that sort of thing at a casual level. But when you introduce cold temperatures that deplete the battery, when you introduce snow and water and and things melting snow that can impact, <clears throat> excuse me, how you input information into the phone, it's just a it's just it's a nice accessory, but I would not rely on it for for your safety. And then being aware of winter specific dangers we've already covered, things like avalanches, thin ice, tree wells for folks, um, you know, big issue with skiing in the backcountry. So keep all that in mind. Uh, the last one here, set up, sorry, not the last one, set up and practice using your gear. This group of, um, of unruly gentlemen are uh, Garmin associates from different teams and we're out on a snowshoe trip and we're testing out the the inReach Explorer Plus and the inReach Mini is just out of screen, but make sure you understand uh, the, the features of the gear that you're using. What are their abilities? Are there any limitations in the gear you're carrying? Practice ahead of time. Make sure you know how to use all of it. Test it ahead of time. Make sure everything's working. Is your subscription active? That kind of thing. Uh, definitely easier to learn when you're at home in your backyard uh, practicing than to try and refresh your memory while you're on the side of the mountain. So don't wait until your trip to test. Uh, so one of the things that's important from the inReach perspective, definitely make sure your device is set up. Make sure you have an active subscription. Your contact information is up to date. You have uh, put in any contacts you want to send messages to. Double check your presets, quick text, any planning. And you see here a screenshot of the account showing you where you can go in. Um, also want to make sure that you've paired your device to your phone. If you're going to use it for syncing, you see the Explore app, which works with the, that list of devices. The EarthMate has a, has a different list. Um, pair the your inReach device to your phone so that you can use the app if you choose while you're there. And certainly make sure that you have charged your inReach device. We hear on occasion from people who get to the trailhead and realize that they only have a handful of hours because they forgot to charge your device. Definitely want to do that. Sync your device to get all your planning information onto it. Test your subscription before you go. Sometimes people use these devices seasonally. And if that's the case, there's a chance you suspended your uh, subscription at the end of the previous season. You don't want to discover that your subscription hasn't been reactivated until you get to the uh, trailhead, you want to test it ahead of time. Very simple. Go to the inReach Utilities page, choose test. It will send a message to the satellites. It will be echoed back down. That's how you know the device is working. And certainly review the basics of how to use your device. There's a, There are webinars. There are support documents just in general. Go and use the device again. Walk around the neighborhood. Make sure you know how to use the basics that you'll use when you're on your trip. Then some general activity tips. This is a picture from one of our training sessions uh, that we put together for some winter ice climbing and mountaineering and practicing with your gear, all of your gear, not just your inReach device, but all of your gear. Make sure you know how to use it. There's some great resources. Join a club, take a class. There are a lot of people that, you know, that are experts in the area and learn from them. That's, that's how we all get to the skill sets that we have is by working with other people who have more knowledge and, and soaking up information that we can take with us into the backcountry. Another tip here for cold weather, managing energy levels. This is an important thing. We have to eat more calories uh, and drink more liquids in the winter to, to fight off the cold temperatures. Make sure you're eating and drinking frequently. And we've already talked about how important it is to keep those electronics uh, from getting cold. One of the things that we can do if we're out for a multi-day trip and it's cold is we can use extended tracking or expedition mode. This is a useful feature because it uh, does some things to reduce the number of GPS readings that are taken or reduce the amount of logging that happens and that allows the battery to last longer. It does uh, turn off some features that might be useful like connecting to your phone, but if you're really just focused on extending that battery life, these are good ideas to do. Um, you can also consider carrying a backup lithium battery. I do that on any of my overnight trips so that I can top off my device while I'm sleeping. 
keep the device warm, turn off your cell phone, only turn it on when you want to check messages or send messages, use airplane mode, a handful of things you can do to manage those energy levels, uh, including carrying a wonderful stew like this when you go up to Tuckerman's Ravine. Keep to your snacks and water uh, within reach so that it's easy to get to them. You can eat and you know graze as you hike, that sort of thing. You want to make sure you're bringing calories that are, or sorry, bring food that are rich in calories and uh, and warm things are great because who doesn't love a warm uh, meal out of a thermos when you get to a place like the shelter at the foot of Tuckerman's and you're watching people um, ski down that that uh, bowl. Definitely carry your water bottle in an insulated cover. They sell they sell little packs that connect to your backpack and they're insulated and you can put your Nalgene bottle right inside. A frozen Nalgene bottle is not a lot of fun when you're trying to get water uh, on the trail, but those insulating carry cases work really well. So the last tip for us to talk about is making sure that we're being prepared for an emergency. This is really important as we think about cold weather because every moment counts when you're out there, you, like we said through this whole presentation, you, you have to be sensitive to how quickly people can get cold, how hypothermia can set in, all these different impacts that you don't really have to deal with in the summertime. Accidents can happen in these environments. You're dealing with ice and snow and slides and all kinds of things, so you have to be prepared for that. And um, if, you, if you have an injury in these cold weather conditions, then things can get just can can escalate and can be more more serious than in the summer. So we definitely want to be careful during the winter. And so our inReach tips for this, obviously the inReach device is heavily focused on safety and making sure that we understand our SOS feature. Don't hesitate to trigger an SOS. You can trigger it for yourself. You can trigger it for someone in your party. You can trigger it for a third party person who you came across on the trail. When you trigger an SOS and you see the the slides here on how to go about that, uh, declaring your SOS. Once you do that, the Garmin IERCC will be uh, immediately involved in trying to coordinate your rescue with the local area uh, search and rescue. They are the go-between between you and the and the people that will come to your aid. The system is capable of two-way messaging, so it's important to keep. Um, you know, you can check in with them and provide detail. They will provide your emergency contacts with details and really just coordinate the whole uh, interaction between you and the rescuers. Um, so definitely keep your emergency contacts and emergency notes up to date for them. Some activity tips for people. Definitely you wanna pack an emergency uh, first aid kit designed, uh, really focused on the kind of activity that you're going to be taking part in. Uh, there's a bunch of good lists online to help you with that, ways to be prepared. Bring extra supplies. There's a chance that you're going to be getting wet and cold, and you never know when you might have to be out longer than you had planned, potentially even in overnight. So carrying a little extra food, a little extra water is always a good idea. Know the symptoms of some things that can happen on these cold weather trips frost nip, frostbite, the signs of hypothermia, know how to uh, treat those things if you notice them for yourself or possibly for someone in your group. And then the last one here that is important is to always bring a headlamp. You don't know when you're going to be delayed and having the comfort of actually being able to see where you're going as you come out of the woods as someone who has had a fair number of trips go just a little bit long. Um, it's good to be able to put that headlamp on and see your footing safely as you walk out of the woods. The last bonus trip, and this is a trip bonus tip. This one is important for us to share with you, definitely. And we mentioned it once before, but don't be afraid to turn back. And um, you'll hear lots of famous explorers talk about how the the goal of the trip is not to reach the summit; it's to return safely back to camp at the end of the of the adventure. Um, and you and you hear so many stories about people who were low on their supplies, low on their energy levels, running out of daylight, and they pushed just a little bit longer because they they saw the summit was in sight, but it causes some drastic consequences when they try to actually return safely to camp. So don't be afraid to turn back. It's better to turn back 
early and, uh, and be safe. Don't take unnecessary risks. One of the things that's important is to look at the time that you have to work with and identify what is my turnaround time uh, and then stick to that once you've identified it. Don't, don't push beyond. So final tip there, don't be afraid to turn back. Um, that was our kind of a speed round through the top 10 uh, recommendations for being safe in outdoor uh, adventures in the winter. And here are some additional resources for folks. The Garmin Explore site we're all aware of. This is where you go for your planning and your account management. The Garmin Support Center section is really powerful, support.garmin.com. You can see lots of documents and manuals that are created by our product support team. Prior webinars like the one you're, you're listening to now will be recorded and put up there for you to see. So check out the support site and also the Garmin blog. This is one of my favorite spots because our subscriber management team works really hard to capture great stories from our inReach users, folks like yourself uh, who have had adventures with inReach. Some even share their SOS stories. We put that together for people and make it available on the uh, Garmin blog. So check that out as well. That was a lot to go through. Hopefully people were able to to uh, capture some good information. And now with Dana's help, we'll open things up to field some questions from everyone.